Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Ag Forecast, brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions, your premier platform for real-time global insights. Well, I want to show you how much temperature changed from the middle of last week until this weekend. So you're looking at a map that compares the 6 a.m. temperatures on January 31st to the 2 p.m. temperatures on February 3rd. So this is Thursday morning against Sunday afternoon. And if you get inside of this white up here, we are actually seeing better than uh, in a 70 degree change in temperature. And by the way, we are waiting to see with the National Weather Service if they'll certify a temperature that was measured there in Mount Carroll, Illinois, that hit minus 38 degrees Fahrenheit. That would be the new all-time record low temperature uh, for uh, for Illinois, all-time. Uh, but look at the map. Look at the enormous swing in temperature. Now, it's interesting. I talked to several farmers over the last week that were talking about how these swings in temperature, not just this one, but the ones leading up to that cold snap, were actually creating what are called frost quakes. So the rapid frost uh, um, you know, a thaw cycle we saw before this bitterly cold air came in allowed a lot of water to seep into the ground. When those sub-zero temperatures came in, the water expanded, basically breaking the ground apart, and it's audible. I mean, you could feel it. It shakes the walls of the house. And I had I had to do some cool research to figure out what this was. But thanks to those farmers for kind of telling me about this event. A lot of people in the Midwest were feeling them uh, after this really really cold snap. But the big question is, where are we going with this pattern? Because it has been volatile, and I'm going to tell you most of that story is right here. Now look, we see that over the southeast, our next 10 days are looking dry. Look at the Ohio River Valley. Look at the Mississippi River Valley, both mid and lower. Look at the wetter than average conditions kind of tucked away from the northern plains up into southern Canada and the lookout west. We can see very wet here in California, Intermountain West, but dry in British Columbia moving into Washington State. And that pattern is a unique one and we got to talk about it. So I went back and I, I was really concerned about the central region. So I'm, I'm looking right in through here in the United States. So I found the wettest Februarys on record, and we kind of look here at the flow pattern of the atmosphere. What do we get? We typically get split flow around a large ridge out west. So the flow comes in like this and around like that, and they meet up and then take on off just like that across the East Coast. So what does this allow happen? This allows a trough to dig into the Intermountain West. This allows for really cold air to build here in parts of British Columbia, uh, really getting into Alberta, Saskatchewan, and this area, and it will likely just keep kind of sneaking down here into the central plains through Montana, through the Dakotas. So we're going to be seeing some extremely cold weather in the Dakotas, but this is also going to make for what we call the Colorado low storm track. So that means coming out of this trough, we're going to see a lot of systems developing here and, and racing on off to the north and east. And that's an interesting storm track we'll see in a few minutes. Meanwhile, the southeast stays warm. The Midwest goes on a temperature roller coaster ride. The northern plains are in the deep freeze. In California, you just got hammered with a lot of snow and a lot of flooding and mudslides. You are not even close to being done. So this is an important pattern to diagnose and watch it play out right here. Every six hours, trough ridge pattern for your next 15 days. What do we see the European Ensemble doing? Well, it was very consistent all weekend long with painting this picture. It's one where we keep developing this ridge in the Gulf of Alaska, split flow coming together into this trough here over the west, building into a ridge here over the southeast that eventually gets its way out there into the open Atlantic. And because of this kind of permanence here of this trough pattern, it means we are going to be seeing some cold weather setting up here where much of winter has been quite mild for the Pacific Northwest. This also means watch out here to there. That's our new storm track. So let's take a look at this here in terms of temperatures first. As you animate, or as I animate this forward, check out the southeast versus the midwest versus the northern plains and the west. Here we go. Roller coaster ride for the middle part of the country. Warm in the southeast. See it there? But you can see the dominance of the colder weather really setting up shop there across the northern plains, Montana, and getting into the Mountain West, backing all the way up into this part of Canada. That is what that flow pattern is doing to us. All right, California, you just took a beating over the weekend with a lot of rain at the lower elevations and some big time snows here in the Sierra Nevada mountains. Just to take a look at what snowpack looks like out west because we have to pay attention to it. It's very important for our spring setup. Well, look at the Sierra Nevada reporting stations. Basin average snow water content over 100%. But the only region I'm getting concerned about is parts of Oregon and Washington, which some of the reporting stations are below that all crucial 
75 to 80 percent mark. Otherwise, much of the Intermountain West is doing quite well with snowfall so far this year. I think this all hazards weather map by weather.gov is one we're going to see quite frequently over the next several days. And this is what I mean. Multiple coastal lows coming out west. So winter storm watches, winter storm warnings, even some blizzard warnings here in the Sierra Nevada mountains. Notice where we have our winter weather alerts on the other side of the mountains, though. They're here in the northern plains from Montana through north and south Dakota over to Minnesota, Wisconsin. In fact, freezing rain in through this area. Each one of these warm ups we will be seeing in this whole region fog. You saw some pretty epic fogs, especially in here over the weekend, and that's just going to be the name of the game. And the fog advisory out right now in southern Wisconsin, northern Iowa, getting over to Michigan. And I think that same region I just colored, I'll kind of color it in again here. This is going to be an area where over the next several systems, we're going to have this constant mix of rain, freezing rain, sleet, and with snow on the backside. So this map, although it's just valid for Monday, looks like a map I think we're going to see quite frequently. Let me take you through the high resolution NAM model. First of all, we got this cutoff feature that's kind of moving off the East Coast, bringing some scattered precip there to coastal Carolinas and Virginia. We will be seeing some pretty strong warm air advection overrunning some cooler air at the surface, and that is why this region is going to be seeing some wintry mix, so some sleet and freezing rain uh, really uh, right in through this area. This is the snow from the system over the weekend. We we'll still have winter storm watches and advisories and warnings into parts of North Dakota, Montana, northern Minnesota because of the wind that's picking up, but keep an eye on the west coast. It is going to continually get lashed with uh, uh, valley rain and mountain snow, so here we go. This takes us through early Monday morning. You can see the freezing rain spreading through parts of the UP of Michigan, also through parts of Wisconsin, some lighter uh, rain showers to the south of there. Meanwhile, watch out west. Lots of just round after round of, of, of these bands of precipitation, snow in the mountains uh, and, and rain in the valleys. So as we get into the overnight hours on Monday into early Tuesday morning, early, early Tuesday morning, we see some light snow spread through the Dakotas as the first system exits off the East Coast. And then as we progress forward, I want you to pay close attention to what we're seeing now for Tuesday midday into afternoon developing in parts of Missouri, Iowa, Illinois, and Wisconsin. See that in there? That's in the afternoon and overnight hours on Tuesday. We will have again a warm air advection event that brings that warm air uh, aloft, but some cooler air tucked underneath it that that region we're kind of circling there may have the risk for, again, a mix between sleet and freezing rain, which is exactly what we don't want to see. Cold enough for snow, though, on the northern side of it. Maybe I should have drawn that, that circle a little smaller. Cold enough for snow here, okay? So that gets us through, if we just kind of finish playing this out, that gets us through early Wednesday morning, okay? Now, let's take it from there by looking at our European model. So if we click play here, we can see that uh, in the day on Monday, the first system moves on out through the UP of Michigan. Windy conditions in the Central Plains, Monday afternoon, overnight hours. By the time we get into early Tuesday morning, see the light snow spreading through parts of the Dakotas. The mountains out west, the next system hits California. That is all prescribed and it's pretty well understood. But look here, in the day on Tuesday, again, we're watching this area for that mixture of, of uh, sleet and freezing rain. There was snow on the backside. Again, that's where that warm air is overrunning everything. And it's there to uh, to give us that setup that we would need for that, uh, you know, that wintry precipitation. Definitely rain to the south of it. There's going to be plenty of warm air pushing into the lower Mississippi River Valley and the Ohio River Valley to keep that rain. But now, the bigger system I want to watch, let me get rid of that drawing, there. the bigger system I want to watch is emerging Wednesday night into Thursday morning. It's coming right out of Colorado and dipping like this and then heading off in that direction. That's a much different storm trajectory than we saw with that cold air we just dealt with last week where we got these clippers that came through. Now the trajectory is more southwest and northeast. So again, what are we watching? Same area for freezing rain. Lots of rain down here and snow on the backside. Now, this snow on the backside is going to be met with some incredibly strong winds in through here. So Nebraska, South Dakota, Iowa, with this system that's coming through, by the time we get Wednesday into Thursday, uh, expect not a lot of snow, but some very, very windy conditions, maybe at times causing some whiteout. But that system moves through, and because there's so much warm air with it, that's, remember, warm air carries more moisture. We're going to be hammering this area with a lot of precipitation. Again, that's the Ohio River Valley into the lower Mississippi River Valley. Enough cold air for a changeover on the back side. So this is our midweek system toward the end of the week we're watching, and it's just not done. That pattern doesn't break down, so watch. As I just get into next weekend, another one emerges. 
So we're just going to keep watching these until this pattern shifts, okay? So if we just kind of break it down, let's say let's look over the next seven days here at total accumulated precipitation. Now this is just from the operational euro. We're going to only look at this for its placement. A lot of rain in through here, mix in through there, snow here, okay? Out west in California, in the Intermountain West, big time precipitation events. Much of the snow across the Midwest stays way far to the north. Again, don't look at this for amounts, let's look at it for placement at this point. But I'll tell you something, California, Sierra Nevada Mountains, we may add another 6 to 10 feet of snow in the next week. So that's going to be a very, very interesting setup for California moving forward. Now, my bigger question is, for the United States, does the colder air that's setting up out west, which will be moving east with time, is it going to last? Over the weekend, we saw the Madden-Julian Oscillation in the European model really get off phases 6 and 7 and then start to migrate into higher amplitude phase 8. We have some pretty good evidence that this tropical feature, the MJO, is going to continue through phase 8 down into phase 1, 2, and 3. Now remember, in February, phases 1, 2, and 3 are cold for much of the United States. So I know the groundhog came out and it was proclaimed that he saw a shadow and that it springs right around the corner. The MJO says otherwise right now. So does the weakened and displaced polar vortex. So I don't think February, don't get, you know, even though we're gaining daylight hours, don't get ready for spring just yet. Here's the other thing. Look at what phase 7, 8, and 1 uh, do for uh, South America. It comes in wet. And that's why when you look over the next 15 days, look at the much wetter than average conditions we see in through here. Even in Mato Grosso, it's getting wet. This means nothing for soybeans. We're harvesting the soybeans. In fact, it may be a problem for that harvest. It's not going to help them, but it will be helping that safrina corn that is going in. Meanwhile, Argentina picking up on a dry bias. They need this. Parts of Argentina have been exceptionally wet. So if we compare that to the operational model run, uh, we can see a large area of Brazil picking up on two to three plus inches of rain while Argentina is going to a drier pattern here in the near term. For completeness, let's just finish up our story on Australia. Remember that tropical system that kind of snuck in here? Eight to 16 inches of rainfall while much of the other major grown regions in Australia were dry. We see that over the next uh, 15 days or so, the MJO goes into that phase eight, phase seven, which is right here. That's where it is, okay? And we see drier pattern evolving throughout much of Australia. But what's interesting is that heat wave that's been going on, we do actually see a trough kind of trying to move through, cooling things off for a big section of the continent. And and lastly, I just want to give you an update on Europe. We are seeing a, a, a trough feature that's trying to get set up south of Iceland, and that's going to put a big ridge over much of Europe as we move throughout this week. That also dries things out a bit as well. So that's an interesting pattern shift for Europe as we move forward uh, into the next week or so. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this forecast video. We at Nutrient Ag Solutions hope you look forward to our next Ag forecast coming out on Thursday morning. Have a great week, and I'll talk to you on Thursday. Thank you.